Hello, and welcome back to the People Analytics Podcast. As always, I'm the host, Sean Boyce, CEO and founder of Staff Geek. I'd like to welcome our guest today, Sarah Salbu Young. Sarah is the talent experience partner at Pega, a publicly traded software company where she's responsible for the company's recognition program. She's convinced that everyone can be a culture champion within their organization. It just takes someone to be that spark for positive change. Hello, Sarah. How are you? And welcome to the show. I'm good, Sean. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Very excited to talk about the topic that we have picked out for today. But before we kind of dive into that, if you could, um, please give our audience more information about your background and how you became the talent experience partner at Pega. Yes, happy to. So I've been on a bit of a career journey over the last few years, and it's taken some turns, um, all in a really good way. And so where I am right now is not at all where I expected I would be 10 years after graduating college. Um, so basically, I started, I studied public relations. I, that was my first few roles out of school was I was focused on communications and social media. And I really enjoyed it because I enjoyed that I was able to connect with people. I had to reach out to people like journalists and just kind of cold call people and build these relationships. And so I learned that I was really good at kind of fostering relationships and trust. And so when, it was, when I was at an early stage startup, I had a conversation with one of the founders after being there for about a year. I said, you know, I feel like I need to be in HR because I feel like I'm impacting the way everyone works. And I was the one that was getting the cake for the birthdays and making sure we had happy hours and those social things and kind of bringing people together. And she was like, no, no, focus on doing PR and social and all that stuff. Um, and so then it was, but that idea just stayed with me that, I think I'm on to something. I'm kind of, I naturally gravitate towards this kind of aspect of a business. And when I joined um, a, another software company, about two years into, the, into being there doing public relations, our CMO said to me, you know, Sarah, I think you should turn your communications mindset inwards and just focus on our employees and think about how do we make sure people feel included? How do we make sure that people feel up to date on what's going on? And that we celebrate each other's successes and give people a chance to know that. Um, so how my like official journey into moving from marketing and PR to a people function is because I started hosting a weekly happy hour. Um, and so it was a simple thing. It was kind of an informal tradition that the company had, but no one really owned it. It didn't always happen. And so I saw that as an opportunity to say, hey, I'm going to be Conan O'Brien for this happy hour and I'm going to make sure everyone comes together and we're going to share updates from the week. And yes, we're going to grab a drink. And then also we're going to give little shout outs for people who have gone above and beyond and helped other people. And so that's what started me on this journey. And from there, I was able to build the case for why it was so impactful in the organization to have someone focused on this. So I then started, um, I revamped our onboarding program to think about our new hire journey and experience to make sure they feel set up for success and really excited about this big decision that they've just made. They just decided to join a new organization and that's a big life decision. Let's make sure that they feel good about it. Um, and then, and then some employer branding. And so anyway, then I've now had an opportunity to join PEGA, which has been awesome. And I'm fully focused on this recognition program, which I feel like I'm able to basically spread happiness. <laughs> That's like my job <laughs> is to make sure people feel happy and recognized when things happen. So when they hit an anniversary, when um, they've done something above and beyond and uh, through our peer-to-peer -peer recognition, as well as our awards program. So that's a little summary of my journey to where I am right now. I have to say that's one of the coolest job descriptions I think I've heard <laughs> is to spread happiness. That <laughs> sounds like an awesome job that I think almost everybody would want. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. very interested to learn more about that. It sounds like you are kind of a natural people leader, which is also exciting. One of the things I know we've talked about before as well too is the show is a great opportunity to meet all these fantastic people leaders and what I hear sometimes relatively in common about their background is they come from all walks of life, which I think is a really powerful component to the role and brings just all kinds of cool diversity and, and thought and all kinds of good stuff to the roles in which, you know, these critical roles that they're fulfilling at their organization. So thank you for mm -hmm. sharing information about your background. Uh, it's very yeah. interesting and I'm sure it leads yeah. to the awesome work that you've been doing. 
And that brings me to the topic about what we want to talk about today, uh, mm -hmm. given the nature of your expertise, and that is the employee experience. Mm -hmm. um, since I'm not going to do it justice and you're the expert, <laughs> we're going to have you describe what that is. So sure. let's start there and then we'll roll, roll forward from there. Sure. Yeah. So I think, um, and there's a lot of different definitions out there. And I, I sometimes think about this kind of academically and, um, but then also I just think about my own personal experience and reflection. So, you know, everyone is a customer of something. Everyone is an employee to some degree. And there are different expectations and experiences that we have both positive and negative. And so when just going to like a consumer customer experience, if you have a really great experience, you go to a store and you have a really great experience. It's they had what you need. The associates were really helpful. It was a really lovely space. You felt really good being there. Um, and then you left out and you were happy. Well, you feel, you have a really positive association with that brand and that experience. So that's a similar thing, taking that application, which is really kind of a marketing mindset and applying that to employees. And I know now, you know, everyone being home, you know, kind of the office space is definitely changed, but just thinking about how you create a space for people to feel like they can thrive and do their best. I think everyone, when you're an employee, you want to end each day feeling like you accomplished something, that you helped someone, that you got something done, that you challenged yourself. And if you're able to do that on a regular basis through um, having the right resources, being able to effectively collaborate with your peers, having a healthy dynamic, um, having the tools and technology to be able to do that, it's not this clunky, cumbersome thing, um, that's that's what employee experience is all about. So it touches so many different aspects. Like I actually think pretty much every function of the organization owns employee experience. So it's not something that people and HR is fully responsible for. It's IT needs to think about the employee experience and how they interact with different systems. Communications team, how do we communicate and create a forum for communications? Um, leadership. Um, so it really, it, it spans, um, uh, it, it sits in a lot of different places, but in essence, it's creating that positive environment where people can contribute, feel good about it, grow and thrive. I'm glad I let you answer that question. <laughs> They're a much better job than I would have, but there's a lot to unpack there and we're gonna dive into those details. Sure. I'm gonna pull back a quote that I have from a previous conversation that you and I have had, and I'd love to hear you talk about this because you mentioned a bit of it in the description you just gave, and that's that anyone at any level of an organization can drive culture. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about what that means mm -hmm. and how it works. Um, obviously, culture is a big part of what we do and what we're all about as well also, so I think it'd be a great place to go next. Can you talk a little bit more about what you mean by that and how that's possible? Sure, so I will talk about kind of two facets to that and how I think about that. So the first is like, um, let me give you an example. So a few weeks ago, I met with a recent college grad just over the phone and she's looking for a new job. And so we were just talking about what she's looking for and how I may be able to help. And so I said, I think she asked for just kind of general advice. And I said, you're just starting out in your career. And I think that it's an untapped possibility that many people maybe are aware of or maybe not aware of, that if you are a positive person to work with, if you make an effort to connect with others, then you're going to, you're going to grow in your career and you're going to be seen as a culture ad, a culture kind of agent um, and kind of a brand ambassador for the culture. So it can be as simple as this is kind of the fun things, but being the person who says, hey, I'd like to host a game night with our team and get the group together and let's, let's hang out and do that. It's also making sure that when you're interacting with people one-on-one -on -one, that you're making it easy, that you're not being difficult or um, that you're being aware of the experience you're creating for that other person. Um, so it's a responsibility of an individual at any level to be mindful to make your environment and working with you a great experience. Or, or, um, and so, that's, so that was my advice. And I learned that at that early stage startup and then 
again at Mendix when I hosted those happy hours is that you can really solidify yourself as a culture champion at any level, as an, in, as an intern, as an independent individual contributor to a manager, um, anyone at any level. Then on the other end, and this is more for leaders within an organization to consider, is that it has, there has to be the culture and the, um, I guess, yeah, I, the culture and kind of openness to allowing people to be those culture champions. I think we've all probably experienced environments where you're like, you feel like you can't really be yourself and you're a little bit more buttoned up and it's like, ooh, I'm, I'm a little nervous to do something or I don't wanna mess this up or I'm double checking my emails and stuff like that. And that's good, good to do, to be mindful of that, but to not have an environment that's so like um, kind of uh, crowding in on someone's kind of creativity and, and ability to have that impact, to not be afraid to say, hey, I want to host that game night or, hey, you know, really be, you know, not put under pressure so that they're being difficult with someone that they're interacting with. So it kind of goes on both ends of the spectrum where, you know, individuals need to be mindful and look for opportunities to kind of have that fun, be easier to work with. Um, and then also leadership, leadership kind of setting that tone for that. Um, I'll just do one more analogy just to illustrate my point of this easier to work with. Um, there was a study done where um, in this office, in the lobby, they put out a basket of oranges and bananas. And so you could just walk by and you could pick up an orange or a banana. They found that all of the bananas were taken first. And then sometimes at the end of the day, the oranges would be left. And that's because when you think about the experience of eating an orange versus a banana, it's easier to peel a banana and eat it <laughs> versus an orange can be messy. It, you might get the acid kind of in your fingernails or whatever. So if you think about that, when you are working with someone, be a banana, <laughs> don't be an orange, be e make it easy to work with you. Um, and so that's, that's a great kind of metaphor for, for how someone can be a culture champion within their organization. Love the analogies. <laughs> they always help. And that's a great visual. <laughs> it makes perfect <laughs> sense. Right. But you did a great job of articulating that. It's not just about believing in that vision, but enabling it too. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be a top down thing where if people are given, if people, if the, the essence is that anyone can contribute, they have to have the mechanism for which they're able to do that. I think you have a lot of experience doing that. So uh, that's an excellent way to kind of describe it and lay out options for people who want to get more involved. So another component I wanted to ask you about as well too, and this ties in very closely with the employee experience, and we've talked about it before, is why companies should be focused on recognition. There's mm -hmm. a lot you can do in there to level up or improve or ensure mm -hmm. that the right priorities are being made there in order to drive, uh, you know, home that effective employee experience. So I'd love to you talk a little bit more about recognition. Sure. So I think recognition is just so powerful and just so impactful. I mean, I think I, I still, I'm sure everyone has this experience. I remember I had this one experience in eighth grade. Gosh, that was so long ago where a teacher made a really nice comment about me in front of the class. I still remember that. And that is, that's just the, and I'm sure everyone can relate to that, can think back to their childhood or early career or college age, whatever. So that's why recognition is so powerful. And so as an organization, if you've invested in really articulating and understanding your values and communicating them, then I know companies at different stages Put different emphasis on, on values. But at PEGA, what I'm really impressed with is we have values, we have a set of values, and then we also have a set of success behaviors, which is so awesome to really articulate how we as an organization expect our teammates to act and behave with one another and with our, with our customers. And so since we have that clearly defined, then it's really great to kind of emphasize that behavior through recognition. So that's where recognition becomes really powerful and impactful in the business and the productivity of the business. Um, but then 
just kind of bigger picture, we have um, you know, kind of a peer, we have a peer to peer recognition tool and where you can give kind of spontaneous frequent feedback um, or recognition. And then it's tied to uh, a charity donation. So we don't actually give like monetary gifts. It's actually, we have a really great charitable um, program where we donate a significant amount of money to charity. And so that program funds a portion of that, which is really awesome. And so we have the ability to tag those different success behaviors to those recognitions. Um, so yeah, I think, and to think about recognition, there's, there's a few different aspects to it. So it needs to be timely. So it needs to be when, after someone has done something above and beyond or done something of really high quality, um, it needs to be relevant. So making sure that it really is, you're being recognized for um, truly going above and beyond or doing something of high quality. And then um, visible. That's another key thing. And that's really where there's an opportunity for someone like me to play a role in helping an organization make recognition visible. So like with the happy hour example, that then became a regular forum where people expected recognition and people to get up and say, hey, so-and-so helped me with this client this week. Thank you. And that visibility, while it's great to go directly to that person, it's also really nice to have that kind of shared and give you that kind of social credibility within an organization. Um, so yeah, so there's, and, and there's a lot of great tools that companies can look into to help facilitate that. So at PEGA, we're such a large organization, almost 6,000 people. We, we have invested in a software tool to facilitate that recognition. If you're smaller, you can actually do it during a monthly all hands or during team meetings. Um, it's definitely something that can be incorporated on a regular basis. And um, yeah, so. Great framework to use to think about not just why it's important, but how you can start thinking about how you might do it. And that leads very well into my next question. For those of our listeners out there that are hearing the stories that you're sharing and what you've achieved, and they want to get started, they want to be more active in this, they want to level up their recognition programs, or they want to improve, mm -hmm. improve their employee experience. What is the best advice you have for them in terms of getting started and how to think about phasing that out moving forward? Sure. So if, if you're thinking about, and, and this is advice for anyone in any part of the organization. So if you're someone like me who was in a marketing in a marketing function and was kind of like, hmm, I think I could do something with all of my people. And, um, or if you're in the people function, but one of the best um, things I could advise is to find a champion find and especially senior leader champion that will be really helpful so for me at my last role it was our cmo he saw the vision he was able to support and advocate advocate for uh, was an advocate for me um so that would be one thing is to think about that then the other thing is i think sometimes employee experience if can feel kind of overwhelming and just like this vague thing that's like let's wave a magic wand and we'll have good employee experience and it's really that's not how it is and so it's uh the saying you know you i, I don't necessarily like this saying but it's um you eat an elephant by taking one bite at a time so you need to think figure out you know where to get started so one way is to think about along the employee journey so if you think about the candidate experience new hire experience current employees up and coming risers, maybe individual, independent individual contributors becoming leaders, existing leadership, um, and then exits and alumni. So you can kind of think along that journey. So that's something I did at Mendix is I focused in on the new hire experience and then was able to focus and build a program there um, for that population. So that's one way to do it. Um, the other way is to think opportunistically. So for example, another thing that I got involved in was in their branding. So, you know, our talent partners, they are recruiters, they wanted to add to the pipeline. So I, I knew that that was a challenge that they had. And so I said, how about I partner with you and I will help to fill that pipeline. So we hosted events in our office based on, like we were looking for marketing roles. So we partnered with different 
marketing organizations and offered our space for them to come in and, and do those, those events. I know now things are virtual, but that's just an example where it was, there was a challenge within the people organization and then I became a partner to that to help um, kind of solve that issue. So yeah, there's a few, a few different ways. Um, and then I, the other piece of advice of getting going in employee experience, don't be afraid to try something. Once you get started, learn from it, but be consistent. Um, I think that my happy hour example, I easily could have kind of let that drop off and I didn't. I was pretty strict with myself of getting that going. And the sad reality is when it comes to employee experience, since it impacts everyone, everyone typically has an opinion. And sometimes the loudest opinions are the negative opinions. And so I, there were few, just a few voices with the happy hour example who were very outspoken, who were like, we should not be doing this. It's on a Friday, everyone should leave, the blah, blah, blah. But the vast majority of the not as loud voices loved it. And so I needed to not get brought, beaten down by that and really focus on the people who were being, who enjoyed it, who found it impactful, who felt that they were more included in the company. That's what I had to focus on. So, you know, kind of some common themes here. It's find your, find your champion, make sure you're, you're honing in on the people for why you're doing that and really use that as your motivator. And then you can think about it in terms of either the employee journey or kind of opportunistically, what is a business need and how could I potentially partner with that to help solve that? First off, kudos to you for continuing to be that champion, despite <laughs> there being some naysayers in the crowd. Yes. That's a really good point, right? Yep. Is mm -hmm. having the perseverance to stick with it and mm -hmm. see it through and also understand that there's a quieter majority there getting a lot of value out of this too. That yes. I think that would help to calm a lot of fears that people might have in terms mm -hmm. of, I don't want to upset the establishment or things mm -hmm. all that much, but mm -hmm. innovation is change inevitably and you have to experiment as well too. Yeah. And everyone, your people are gonna respond differently, yeah. but sticking with it, having you know the perseverance to do exactly that and then measuring its effectiveness, right? Mm -hmm. and then innovating mm -hmm. from there. Like wherever you start, that's great. Doesn't matter how mm -hmm. small or large where you begin, it's really where you're gonna end up, right? Mm -hmm. What's the value, what's everybody getting, measuring the impact of the program kind of thing. You clearly stuck with it and it was a home run. So yeah. great way to think about it, excellent mindset to have and mm -hmm. plenty of inspiration for those out there that want to become more active in doing these things themselves. So thank you for sharing. Definitely. That. And sure. uh, obviously, thank you for being here. Yeah, we have a couple questions for you before we let you go. Sure. Yeah. Um, the first one is, are there any resources that you would mention in and around the topic we talked about today or anything in general for people, leaders out there for them to go learn more, dive in, uh, that type of thing? Yes. So I would recommend VentureFizz. That's a, uh, I, I'm a little biased because I periodically write for VentureFizz, uh, but it's a really great website. It's great for job seekers. It's all great for people in employer branding, especially around the Boston, New York, and Philly area. He, uh, the editor, does a really great job profiling companies and and leadership. Um, so, and then there's some really great general kind of people leadership articles. So I'd recommend subscribing there. Also, there is an organization out of New York that is called Life Labs Learning. And so they, you can go up to their website, you can sign up for their newsletter and they periodically host workshops on a variety of topics that are really relevant for uh, people in the people function. So it's things like how to give effective feedback, how to have an effective one-on-one, -on -one, how to scale culture. So just really great topics, they break it down make it really easy to understand and they're very research focused. So that's a great organization. Another company to subscribe to is called Shift the Work. They are a consulting firm out of Baltimore and they focus on exactly what we're talking, employee experience, internal communications. And so they work alongside Fortune 500 organizations to help them build their culture and their employee experience. And so they have a really great newsletter with a lot of thought leadership. 
Um, and then another company that actually has a really great book is called Reward Gate Gateway, and they have a book called Build It. And so they have chapters on all different things. So what I have tagged is the recognition chapter. Um, but they're, they're an awesome resource to check out. And yes, I think that's it. And then just follow my general recommendation is as you're as an individual thinking about your career journey into employee experience is look for the people who have already kind of gone on that journey. So for me, for example, Katie Burke, the chief people officer at HubSpot is a great person to follow on LinkedIn. She posts a lot of thought leadership. Also Christina Lucioni at Rapid7. She is, she actually writes regularly for Venture Fizz. Um, so those are, and I know those are Boston examples, but um, actually following people who are leaders in this space and then kind of seeing what they're posting about is, is also great inspiration. Excellent. A lot of value there. Got a link to all of that stuff. So thank you sure. for providing. <laughs> sure. And uh, last question that I have for you is yeah. who should reach out to you and how can they get in touch? Sure. So I'll do kind of a push and pull. Um, so anyone who is interested in career advice, uh, would like to just touch base if this is something that you're interested in exploring or you're tasked with building a recognition program or a new hire onboarding experience, uh, you know, program, um, or just employee experience in general, if you'd like to chat, just feel free to reach out. And then I'll also do the same. If anyone has run a recognition program, has experienced doing this, I am new in this role. And um, so I'm open to speaking with uh, experts in this space. So, um, and then you can find me on LinkedIn, Sarah Selby Young. Also Twitter, Sarah Salbu, or Sarah Salbu Young, I think it's my handle, anyway. Um, and then uh, my email address, sarah.salbu at gmail.com. Thank you for providing those. I'll include those in the notes as well. And I can't thank you enough, Sarah, for being here and sharing your incredible yes. knowledge and experience with both myself and our audience. Yes, thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. You're very welcome. Thanks for listening to this episode of the People Analytics Podcast powered by StaffGeek. If you or anyone you know is a leader in human resources or talent acquisition and would be interested in being a guest on our show, please reach out to me at sean at staffgeek.com. That's sean, S-E-A-N, at staffgeek, S-T-A-F-F-G-E-E-K.com. We would love to share your valuable knowledge with our audience. At this point, we'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of our show, StaffGeek. StaffGeek helps companies hire smarter, by increasing retention, and combating turnover, all while reducing time to hire. They do this by creating a customized behavioral assessment around your company's unique culture. Armed with your fit tech assessment, you're able to evaluate which candidates are the right fit for your company's culture. Start hiring smarter today with StaffGeek. If you'd like to learn more, reach out to StaffGeek at hello at staffgeek.com or visit them on the web at staffgeek.com.